On February 1, 2007, the Senate voted overwhelmingly to increase the federal minimum wage to $7.25 per hour over the course of two years. While some think a raise in minimum wage is necessary, others think it will have a negative effect on our economy. In this video, we interviewed guests from each side of the argument. I'm a strong supporter of raising the minimum wage. I voted for an increase here in the legislature of the state's minimum wage. And I think that if someone is willing to work 40 hours a week and work hard, that they should earn a wage that allows them to make a living. And the minimum wage we currently have has not been raised for since the early 1990s. And the cost of living has increased since then. So people working under the minimum wage now are actually working for less in real dollars than they would have been working back in 1992 or 93 when it was last raised. Federal minimum wage has not been increased since 1997 when it was set at $5.15 an hour. Inflation has eroded uh, the purchasing power of the minimum wage uh, by almost 20% since then. And in terms of purchasing power, uh, it now is uh, below where it has been for the past half century. I don't believe the minimum wage should be raised. In fact, I don't believe that a minimum wage is appropriate at all. Uh, being an employer myself, uh, what happens when you raise the minimum wage is you artificially inflate the cost of goods and services. I'm very much for it. As you know, there's a federal or national minimum wage law that covers really larger companies than those with interstate commerce. Then the states are free to have their own minimum wage law to cover those workers and companies not covered by the federal law. This was first enacted, you know, during the Roosevelt period back in the 1930s, almost 70 years ago. Forty-three states now have a state minimum wage law to cover those workers not covered by the federal. We've not raised our rate in 10 years. Uh, before we answer this question, um, uh, let me just say that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the first purpose of public policy, of any public policy that the government decides is to help the poor. And any policy has to be judged by how it affects the poor. And as far as the minimum wage con is concerned, I don't think it's the best way to help the poor. There are some negative effects of uh, raising the minimum wage uh, that will uh, adversely affect the poor. There's some overwhelming evidence that raising the minimum wage will destroy jobs. I worked minimum wage jobs in the past and also as a case manager with Big Brothers Big Sisters. A lot of the families that I work with um, are single parent homes where most of the time the women are working minimum wage jobs where they need that extra increase to meet the additional costs of health care, um, some of the food needs for their family, and just other alternative um, spending that they have that they can't make ends meet with the wages as they are now. Working 40 hours a week, which is considered a full-time job, is not actually amounting to a living wage for those families. Even the Chicago uh, Federal Reserve Bank uh, did studies that said that for every uh, two to three percent, excuse me, for every 10 percent increase in the minimum wage, uh, automatically we'll lose two to three percent of our job opportunities. That's two to three percent, two to three jobs out of a hundred that someone starting out who wants to have a car, who wants to have a moped, who wants to have a stereo system or a new computer uh, starting out that will not have the opportunity. So if you raise the minimum wage by 10 percent, uh, among low-skilled workers, employment will drop by about a percent. There are estimates that vary a little bit, but this is the, the um, best guess that summarizes the available evidence. Uh, the second effect is that uh, the minimum wage actually tends to pull children out of high school prematurely. Um, and the, the third negative aspect of the minimum wage is that uh, it's not well targeted. There's a large fraction of people that work at or close to the current minimum wage that are actually teenagers from middle class families and those would benefit by a uh, increase in the minimum wage and it's not clear at all that public policy is there to help middle class families if it comes to the cost of, of hurting the poor.
there are already tax breaks to help small businesses. Now at the national level, there's talk about that. As you know, the Congress, that is the House, has passed a bill with no tax breaks for business, small business, and the Senate is talking about maybe doing it. But in Indiana, I think the business climate is very favorable already in our state. And so, I, in fact, on the, to help any business, there is a training wage uh, that companies can pay that is below the minimum wage. It's 85 percent of the minimum wage. So, for a new worker, 17 years old, whatever, they could be paid a smaller or lesser wage for the first 90 days of their employment. So, there are already ways to address that situation. I think currently. I think in many ways it will affect small businesses in, 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 similarly to larger firms. Uh, the minimum wage will raise costs of hiring labor, low skilled labor, uh, by the amount that the wage is raised. Um, if costs go up, firms will have to raise the price. And in most, it doesn't matter whether we have a market with many firms or a market with uh, a small number of firms. As soon as costs rise, prices that these firms uh, uh, charge will go up as well. I per per personally do not even pay anywhere close to the minimum wage. In order to hire employees to work in my own business, we're at $10 an hour starting out in order to get the quality of employee that we need. So any artificial inflation to that wage would greatly reduce the number of individuals that would even qualify to work for us. Um, <clears throat> well, 70% of the minimum wage employees are adults that I think would benefit from, you know, one year or two year associate's degrees where they could get types of jobs that are not just the line cooks, the servers, and the hourly employment. Um, so I would like to see a reinvestment in some of the money that if, indiv if individual if individuals are against the minimum wage increase, <coughs> then supporting some sort of work workforce skills training for individuals that want to get jobs that pay more than the minimum wage? Depends on the person. Uh, the hope is that any worker at whatever job would have some chance to advance. And then if, if you're going to advance, that person would need some kind of training. Now that, that sort of depends on, is the company willing to do that? Is the employee wanting to do that? And their current education level and what future education they're going to have. So it, it depends on a lot of a number of factors, but I would hope that opportunity is available for any young worker.